gentlemen. Um, and good morning. Happy Thursday to you. Here's my parliamentary inquiry is uh, in regards to a document we were given by the majority of Florida leader. I believe in response to an earlier um, inquiry uh, about which the rural senator from Garden Grove had supposedly violated when she was physically removed from the floor on February uh, 23rd. So during that session, the senator from Carmel held up this black book, um, the Mason's Rules of Order, as you remember, quoting that our senator was uh, out of order and her procedure was wrong. So after um, this event occurred, I went and asked the senator uh, which rule he was citing. And he said it was from code number 202. So I had my, my staff research that we could find code 202. So anyway, to make a long story short, following Monday, if you remember, you were the presiding officer. I asked if that the senator could read that rule so we could all learn together. And he just um, said, well, he can give you that off floor. So, he did, which was um, 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 kind of him. And what he said is he was going to uh, um, give me that information. So he put together a two-page handout that all of us got on the floor, if you remember, on Thursday. And the inquiry is what? What's that? What is the inquiry? I'm about ready to get to it. <laughs> you know? So thank you. I appreciate your patience. Thank you very much. That's a virtue, by the way. So well, I'll keep that in mind. The inquiry is. Okay, so anyway, what happened is we were handed on the floor this right here that says it's a select Senate rule from Mason's annual uh, um, rules of order. And there's a code section uh, right here that was quoted, uh, page 112, which I went to the book and looked, and I could not find this quote that directly explains why the senator from Garden Grove was out of order. So it turns out, what, what is the point of order? She was not in the book is what I'm trying to say. So I asked the senator where he got this from, and he said it was not in Mason's rule of law, even though the paper we had there says it was. Okay, so my question was, I was sent over to our um, staff, who's very kind, and I asked, where did this paragraph come from? And I, it, was, it was explained to me that it's the way we've always done things around here, and there's no book, no rules of order that we can point to. So, so I, your inquiry is? Okay. I'm glad you asked that. Thank you. As I requested earlier, what specific rule did the Senator for Garden Grove actually violate, which led her to be forcibly removed from the chamber? Because I have to be honest with you, this appears to be a cut and paste job. And so the inquiry is? Was this an attempt to deceive us? That is the inquiry, Senator? As well as what rule did you violate that we can have in writing, not that's made up? That's the inquiry. Thank you very much, Senator. Senator Chair Wynn, who's closest to him in the foreground. Senator Monning, you wish to yes, respond to that? <coughs> Senator Bill Monning. Well, first, as I think the good senator knows, and all the body knows, uh, a review of this incident is being conducted by the Rules Committee, and I think that's the appropriate place for it to be conducted. I will respond, however. I sought to make a point of order um, and was not allowed to make that point of order because the member continued talking, and that, that was the breach of floor protocol. I did hand out if I permission to read um, from section 149.2 appeals, points of order, and inquiries. Points of order are presented to the presiding officer for determination. The decision of the presiding officer on points of orders may always be questioned by the body on appeal and the question decided by the body itself. We never had that opportunity for the body to decide on my point of order. Uh, if order had been followed, uh, the minority party could have challenged my point of order, it could have gone to a vote, and it could have been determined by the body. We were not afforded that opportunity because of the breach of order. Excuse me, I'm going to, I'm going to respond uh, to the inquiry. Um,
So I'm happy to respond, but I, I'm not totally clear on what it is you require inquiring about. What is the point of inquiry? Just very simply, sir. Yes. No background. What is your question? That's what I need to know, and I'd be happy well, to I have a answer. couple of questions. The first one, as I requested early, what specific role did the senator from Garden Grove actually violate, which led to her first removal from this chamber? And then my second question is, why was something inserted in here that we're told to be true, and it does look and appear, based on what I was told by your side of the aisle, that this is this looks like an attempt to deceive. So those would be my two questions. Um, I'm trying to learn here what would be the right thing to do. Which which reference are you making? To, if you're holding up a piece of paper, could you give us the specific reference? What is it? Uh, section? Yes, here's my... No, no, I just want to know the section. I'm going to get to it. All right, so let's, let's get to it. Section. <laughs> What is the section? Section 145, page 112. And so the paragraph on this page that was passed out, this paragraph is not in here. All right. It, it, is, it, is, it is not in there. This was the, the, the question was this was this discussion uh, by the good senator from Gardner was brought up at the adjournment in memory portion of the Senate proceedings, which was apparently not the appropriate place. The appropriate place was to be in the um, privilege, excuse me, of the condition of the file, which comes, let, let me finish, sir, which comes after adjourned memory. So what you have been referring to here is the select Senate rules, um, section 145 on page 12, that references the adjourn in memory portion, which is the custom and practice of the House. So to break this down, sir, the concern, the point of order that was raised, was raised because the senator from Garden Grove got up to speak in the adjourn in memory portion of our Senate proceedings, which technically is not the appropriate place. The appropriate place is in consideration, uh, excuse me, uh, is in, um, a condition of the file, which follows the journal memory. The senator from uh, Monterey got up at a point of order, which is uh, on the standing rules of the Senate, item 36. It says, when a senator is called to order, he or she shall sit down until he or she who is presiding has determined whether or not he or she is in order. So basically, the rules of the House require that once a point of order is called, the person speaking stops until that point of order is made, and then every question of order shall be decided by he or she who is presiding, subject to an appeal to the Senate by any senator. That is the process that was supposed to be followed. If a senator is called to order for words spoken, the objectionable language shall immediately be taken down in writing by the Secretary of the Senate. That is the process. That process apparently was being questioned by the point of order. At that point, we all, as members of this body, through the custom and practice and the standing rules of the Senate, are supposed to stop so that that point of order can be discussed, debated, and determined, after which point the discussion, based upon whether or not it complies with our rules, will either go forth or not go forth, based upon those rules. So can I just repeat that and make sure I, I understand? There's two sentences. Number one, this is wrong, that was passed out to us. And number two, then her being forcibly taken out was correct. Sir, I have just read to you, in response to your parliamentary inquiry, what the answer is. All right, uh, Senator Monroe. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, in further response to the member's inquiry, uh, he's referring to an information sheet I circulated after the incident to provide all members with appropriate code sections. On the one related to resolutions, memorials, and orders, I did add that the 
return in memory, and this is based on information from the desk, it is the custom and practice of the Senate to honor and celebrate the life of a high achieving constituent or colleague. When I made the point of order, that was the point I sought to make. It would have been subject to debate and a vote of the body. My understanding, Madam President, the decision for removal was based on the behavior of a member, not based on the content of anything uh, that that member may have wanted to advance. Order was breached. The decision of the presiding officer was based on that breach of order. Uh, and that's, this is the House of Rules, uh, and we have a mechanism to review uh, an objection to procedure that was not followed. Thank you, Senator Lonnie. We're, we're done. You've made, your point. You've made your inquiry. The inquiry has been answered, and we're going to move on. Are there any other privileges of the floor? Anyone else have the privileges of the floor? By the way, I don't Senator, think Senator, the answer. Senator, the question has been answered. It may not be to your satisfaction. That is the answer. I just want to know about the fraudulent document. Senator, that is not a point of inquiry. We're going to move on. Senator Anderson, do you wish under privileges of the floor? Under uh, privileges of the floor. Actually, I, I have a, a quick question. So, uh, is this under, sir? We're going to run this house as it's been run well, historically. Right. Excuse me, sir. Let me, let me finish. A, a, a house of order, a house of rules, a house of custom and practice. We are now on privileges of the floor. What is your privilege of the floor for which you are seeking? I, I have an inquiry. We are a body of rules, and we should run the house accordingly. So we're just asking for verification where we can go to read those rules so that we may follow them. The those rules that were said. circulated is not written anywhere. Those rules are not written. They're not. They, they, we didn't hear from the vote to accept the rules of the house. They are not in those rules, they're not in Mason's manual. So just tell us the secret rules that you want us to operate by so they're not such a secret. So we can come home. That's Senator, what I'm asking. Senator, there are no secret rules. I've read you the, the sections. I've read you the sections. These are from the various. Senate Resolution 4, which we adopted early on, was an adoption of these rules. Any other privileges of the floor? Senator Wynn. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I'm, Mike, I, I have a question to ask the Senator from Carmel, if that is okay. Senator Wynn, thank you. The question is only appropriate if Senator Ronnie uh, agrees to yield. You agree to yield to a question, sir? Yes, Madam President. Thank you, Senator. When you may proceed. I'm just curious, Senator, that you kept on talking about points of order, but if I remember clearly on the video, you stated out of order. I'm just curious, when did we start changing the words? Is it for convenience, to make your story look better, or is it actual rule of order? Because I think it's inappropriate for you to keep on saying that it is my behavior that led to my removal. In other words, you have just stated that I should have been removed out of this court. It's a yes or no answer. Well, first of all, Madam. Yes or no answer, Senator. No, excuse me. You've asked for a response. You posed a question. I will answer it in my own words. Uh, my own words are review the tape that will be reviewed by the Rules Committee, I sought to make a point of order. It was the presiding officer, I believe, who ruled you out of order. I sought to make a point of order. My question was whether it was appropriate to make the comments you chose to make as part of an adjourned memory related to an adjourned memory that had taken place two days earlier um, and that it would be more appropriate to take that up as on the condition of the file. It's also my understanding that that option was made clear uh, and was not chosen. So again, I think, Madam President, this is a matter that has been directed to a committee of the Rules Committee, and I think that is the appropriate venue at this point uh, to review what transpired. 
Uh, but again, I, I'm glad to continue the conversation. I stopped to raise the point of order. We never really got to discuss that point of order as to whether it was an appropriate uh, commentary on an adjournment memory. My belief was that it wasn't. Thank you very much. I will read one more, I will read one more section under the standing.